We turn now to 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 17. In the context of what is mentioned in the previous verses of submitting for the Lord's sake to every human authority, verse 13, and to those deputed by the government to rule over the people, verse 14, he says, Honor all men, love the brotherhood, fear God, and honor the king. Here are four brief exhortations concerning our attitudes to people. We are to honor all men. All human beings are to be honored because they are made in the image of God. We're told in James chapter 3 and verse 9 that many people bless their Lord and Father with their mouth and then curse men with the same tongue, men who have been made in the likeness of God. Because man has been made in the likeness of God, although that likeness has been terribly disfigured by sin, we are to honor them. They are not like animals, whether they are poor or rich. We are to honor them, whether they are beggars on the street or kings that sit on the throne. Ministers having authority, governors and rulers, or the poor people in the streets. We are to honor all men. When we look at our own lives, we find that although we may find it easy to show respect for those who are big in the world, very often the attitude of even many Christians is one of despising or speaking rudely to those who are beneath them in social status. But our Christianity is tested in our attitude to those who are beneath us in the social scale. What is your attitude to the servant in your house, to the beggar on the street, to the pune in a government office? That is a better test of your Christianity than how you behave with somebody who is big in society or maybe somebody who is equal to you in society. A true Christian, a true follower of Jesus, will treat all men with kindness, never speak rudely or harshly to anyone, even if that person is lower in the social scale. He will honor all men and obey the exhortation in 1 Peter 2, verse 17. Honor all men. When it comes to the brotherhood, which is the church of the living God, there we are to do more than honor. We are to love fervently. Now, in a sense, it's true that we are to love our neighbor as ourselves and everyone. But the New Testament specifically and specially emphasizes love within the brotherhood. Every single person, whether of your culture or not, whether of your language or not, whether of your convictions or not, if he's in the brotherhood, we are to love fervently. Then our attitude to God fear God. Deep within our hearts there must be a deep fear of God and honor, again, those who are in authority, the emperor in those days. Now we may say, what about those who are corrupt? Remember that Peter was writing in a day when the emperor of Rome was Nero, one of the most corrupt anti-Christian emperors that Rome ever saw. And yet, Peter says, honor the emperor. Not because of his character, not because he knows God, perhaps he's an ignorant atheist, but because he is an authority. Our calling is never to rebel against authority, but to submit to authority. We are to honor all men, love the brotherhood, fear God, and honor the emperor, the one in authority, by submitting to him. Verse 18, servants. Be submissive to your masters. Again, he's speaking about the same subject in a sense. Submission to those who are above you in authority. With all respect, we are to submit to our masters. If you're a slave in a house, a servant in a house, submit to your master. In your school and college, your master is your teacher, your principal. Submit to them with all respect. 
in your office, the one who is above you in the office, above you in the factory, or in your place of work, whoever it is, this word comes to you and to me if we are followers of Jesus, if we are this chosen race, if we are this people who are God's own possession, if we are strangers and foreigners in this world, then we act in submission and act with a spirit of submission to those who are above us in our secular jobs. And thereby we are different from the people of the world in whom there is a spirit of rebellion. To what type of masters are we to be submissive? It says in verse 18, not only to those who are good and gentle, but also to those who are unreasonable. In other words, not only when our masters are kind and considerate, but even if your master is tough and cruel and treats you unjustly without proper respect, then you are to submit to them too. For this finds favor, it says, in the eyes of God. And so we find that the calling of the Christian is to manifest a spirit of submission in the midst of a world where the spirit of rebellion is rife. God's kingdom is founded on submission to authority. Jesus submitted to authority. The devil rebelled against authority. And these are the heads of two kingdoms. Jesus heading up the kingdom of God and Satan heading up the kingdom of the devil. Rebellion has no place in the kingdom of God. And that spirit of rebellion can be found in a schoolboy towards his teacher, in a college student towards his professor, in a factory worker towards the management, in a clerk towards the one who is above him in his office. It can be found everywhere. But the true Christian, having God's nature, showing forth the excellencies of him who has called him, must have no trace, yes, no trace of that spirit of rebellion within him. He must be submissive, and not just submissive, it says in verse 18, with all respect, not with a grumpy attitude, but with respect. How must you submit to that unreasonable, unkind, and perverse one who works above you as your boss in your office or factory. Here is what God's word says. Towards that unreasonable, perverse, tough and cruel master, submit with all respect. Whether he is kind or cruel has got nothing to do with your obedience to God's word. You are to obey God's word. How few there are who take these words seriously. And thereby we see how few there are who have found the narrow way that leads to life. It is obedience to these commands in the New Testament that prove to us whether we are walking along the narrow way that leads to life or on the broad way that leads to destruction. It is through obedience to God's word that we are built up as a spiritual house and our souls are purified. If we are disobedient to the word, Verse 8 of the same chapter tells us that Christ will be a stone of stumbling to us and a rock of offense. In verse 19 we are told that if we submit to masters who are unreasonable and as a result suffer unjustly, God is delighted with us. God is delighted. And he goes on to say in verse 20, of course you are not going to get any credit when you are patient for being beaten or troubled when you have done something wrong. There's no virtue in that, he says. But if you do what is right, and you suffer for it, and you patiently endure it, this finds favor with God. There's no great virtue if you submit to a master who is kind and reasonable and considerate. Even heathen people can manifest that. But the distinctive mark of a Christian is that he can suffer unjustly and still show respect to his master. He can be treated unjustly and harshly for no fault of his, and yet he submits and bears up 
in a godly way to masters and shows them respect. Do you do this? Then you show that you are a Christian, that you belong to another world. Then you stand as a light in the midst of the darkness of this world.